Today I'm preaching the message. I want to welcome you all. Thank you for coming to our live broadcast today. Can I just request of you to send it further or field if you are? Uh, we've got friends on Facebook and things. Just send it on to them so that we can have many more people joining with us today. Next week, I'll be happy to see your beautiful faces and smiling faces uh, in the real because we're going to be meeting again back in our usual venue at Abbey Centre. But for today, uh, hopefully for the final time, we are presenting this live broadcast today from the studios in Walthamstow. Praise the Lord. Now, I actually felt the Lord wanted me to speak about the Holy Spirit, but um, and I was getting a few thoughts together about the Holy Spirit when it became apparent that uh, I was going to be preaching the message today. So I haven't had a lot of time to prepare this, and it's not going to be a long message. It's not even going to be a lot of new things, perhaps, for you. But I really believe this is a message that God wants to give to us today. He wants me to talk about the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to start by reading a few verses in Acts chapter 1. Some of these verses may be quite familiar to you. But it says in Acts chapter 1, starting at verse 1. In the former account I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach. In other words, Luke, who wrote the book of Acts, he wrote an epistle. And in that gospel of Luke, that epistle of Luke, he gave a whole load of details about the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. That was his first book, to talk about the life and the ministry of Jesus Christ in that gospel. And now Jesus has died, he's risen again, and Luke is writing a second book for us. This second book is continuing the work that Jesus began, and the second book is now about the work of the Holy Spirit. The work that Jesus began led to the Holy Spirit, and now we have the Holy Spirit described and the acts of the Holy Spirit in this second book called the Book of Acts. So Luke goes on to say in verse 3, To whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs, being seen by them during forty days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Now, Jesus died, he rose again. And for the next forty days, he is with the disciples He's interacting with them. He's coming and going from among them, being with them. And he's sharing with them and teaching them about things related to the kingdom of God. He's preparing them for the ministry that they are about to engage in. Those disciples, every single one of them, knew that Jesus Christ was the Messiah. They knew that he was their Lord and Saviour. They knew that he had died and rose again. In fact, they'd seen it with their very eyes, his crucifixion, and they'd seen his resurrection as well. They believed in him completely. Nevertheless, it was told to them they must wait to receive the Holy Spirit. So, so there are many Christians today that say, when you get saved, you've got the Holy Spirit, that's it, that's enough, that's done, that's finished. But clearly Jesus didn't believe that. Because these disciples, all of them, were born again, they were saved, they were, fit, they were believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, and yet Jesus said to them they needed something else. They needed the Holy Spirit. Praise God. And being assembled, in verse 4, together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptised with water, but you shall be baptised with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. And then in verse 8, Jesus said these words. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You'll be my witnesses to me in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the world. Praise the Lord. Now, like I said, some Christians say that these things may have died out. Well, that's clearly a, a foolish argument because the Bible says, in the last days I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. So if it's for the last days, it can't be something that finished 2,000 years ago. It's for the last days. And it says you will receive power. It always amazes me the number of people who say this isn't necessary. 
You don't really need this. It's already enough when you get saved and have Jesus in your heart. That's enough. But it's always the people who don't have the Holy Spirit that come up with that argument. There is no one that's filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues, moving with the gifts of the Spirit, who would ever say to you, we don't need the Holy Spirit. It's not necessary for today. Praise the Lord. So today, I really want us to be open for what I'm going to share about the Holy Spirit and how he wants to have this relationship with us. You know, sometimes in life we have disagreements with people. And the only way really to solve our disagreements is to go and sit down with the person and share our heart with the person. Talk to that person and hear their heart as well. Understand where they are coming from. Understand each other by talking about the disagreement you've had and coming to some kind of resolution or compromise, working things out together so that you can go on and continue in the friendship you've got. Misunderstandings happen. The only way that we can fully, truly understand God, because many people misunderstand him and the things that he does and the things that he says, the things that are written in the word, there are many misunderstandings. But the only way we can really understand God is to come and sit down with him, listen to him, hear his heart and allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us, teach us, inform us, instruct us and open our eyes to things which otherwise we may not have known. If we want to know God, if we really want to understand him, if we really want to know his point of view, if we want to understand why the Bible says what it says, why God does things the way he does, if we really want them things, then it's essential for us to communicate with the Holy Spirit, to listen to the Holy Spirit, be instructed by the Holy Spirit, and have him be our teacher. If there is something you don't understand, go to God yourself and ask him. Sometimes you will even get the answer immediately. You'll even get it while you're actually praying the very prayer or asking the very question. The answer will come to your mind and to your thoughts and you'll just know that the answer's been given. Sometimes you may need to wait. I often used to find when I was a new Christian and I had many questions, I would go to the Sunday service and the preaching would actually be about the very things that I was asking God. And I was thinking, wow, you've answered me through the preacher today. You've answered Amen. me through the, through the Bible study that we did in a home group. Amen. And I believe that God will give you the answer in many ways he's possible for him to give it to you. But if you go to him sincerely and ask him, he will answer all your questions. You might need to wait a few days, even a couple of weeks, but you will get your answer. God wants you to ask questions and he wants to give you the answers to the questions that you've got. Praise the Lord. I'd like to read some more verses in John's Gospel, chapter 14. It says in John 14, I will ask the Father, this is verses 16 to 18, and it's related again to the Holy Spirit. John 14, 16 to 18. I will ask the Father and he will give you Another <coughs> comforter. Mm. Now that Greek word that is used there is parakletos, yeah. or paraclete, many of you may have know, <coughs> know those very well-known Greek words, parakletos, paraclete. And we translate it in many translations as comforter. But it has a far broader meaning than just comforter. Mm. And so the Amplified Bible, which uh, we put up on the slide here, the Amplified Bible actually gives you the four meanings of this particular word parakletos. I'll ask the Father and he will give you another parakletos who will be a comforter, counsellor, helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener and standby that he may remain with you forever. That he may remain with you forever. You know, in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit came and left, departed, came upon people, and then went again. Even David prayed the prayer, take not thy Holy Spirit from me. But Jesus says he'll give you the Holy Spirit to remain with you forever. Now, it goes on to say in verse 17 that he is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. The non-believers cannot know the Spirit of truth. They can't welcome or take him to its heart, because the world does not see him or know and recognize him. But you and the, you know and recognize him, for he lives with you constantly and will be in you. I won't leave you as orphans. 
comfortless and desolate and bereaved and forlorn and helpless. But I will come back to you, Jesus said. And when we receive this wonderful Holy Spirit, that is when we receive all what Jesus has just mentioned. And then he says in verse 26 of the same chapter, But the Comforter, the Counselor, Helper, Intercessor, Advocate, Strengthener, Standby, the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name to represent me, he will teach you all things. So the things you don't understand, the things you want to know, he will teach you all things. And he will cause you to recall the things that I have told you. So Holy Spirit, and sometimes I forget to call him Holy Spirit, sometimes I say the Holy Spirit, but you wouldn't say the Vicky, the Mike, or the Jackie, but you would say Vicky, Mike, Jackie, because that's our name. Holy Spirit's his name. So we should really be saying Holy Spirit and not the Holy Spirit, but of course we're still learning to get out of some of the old habits. He is called Holy Spirit. And he will do all of these things and be our teacher. Now very often we want to run to someone when we've got a question. We, we, we read something in the Bible and we think, yeah, I'll, I'll phone the pastor, I'll phone my home group leader, I'll ask another person to explain that to me. And that's fine. You can do that. But how much better would it be to actually go to God himself, God the Holy Spirit, and ask Holy Spirit personally to be your teacher and explain and answer the question for you? Because that's what he delights to do. It says he will teach you all things. So, Holy Spirit wants to be for us all of the things that are mentioned in these verses in John that I've just read. Firstly then, as comforter. He wants to be the comforter to those who are hurting. Some of our members lost their mother, their grandmother, their mother-in-law in this past week when Mrs. Fernandez went to be with the Lord. The comforter is the one who comes to us and comforts us. Yes, God does use people. Yes, I can put my arm around. Yes, I can express my sympathy. I can do my best as a, a pastor or as a human being to help when people are looking for comfort. But the ultimate comforter is the Holy Spirit himself. If you are hurting, if you've been rejected, if you are wounded in any way, you are grieving, you've lost someone, a loved one, it is the Holy Spirit who ultimately wants to be your comforter in the situation you're going through. He's also called the counsellor. Means he is the one that will advise you and guide you and instruct you on what path to take, what route to take. Whether you say, I don't know which job to go for, whether to go for this job or that job. Holy Spirit is the one to guide. When you don't know the way to go, he will tell you the better option to take. He is the one to lead and guide to advise and counsel. He will give you the best possible counsel. It's an unbiased counsel. It's for your benefit counsel. It's for the benefit of the kingdom of God counsel because he also knows the future and even knows that, that if you chose that particular job, soon that company will go bust, but if the other <coughs> job, which was less pay, will actually work out better for you. He knows these things. But so often we use our own mind, our own reasoning, our own intellect and we make our decisions, we rush in based upon what I feel and think and what my mind tells me and what my logic tells me. But Holy Spirit doesn't go by logic, he goes by what he knows, all truth. And that's why the Holy Spirit is our best counsellor. Holy Spirit is also our helper, it says. What does that mean? Well he's the one that helps, even today, I'm standing here preaching this message. I've preached, I don't know, countless hundreds, thousands of times over the many years of ministry. But still, every time I stand to come and preach, I pray the prayer. I have to pray the prayer. Holy Spirit, help me today. I can't ever preach without the Holy Spirit's help. I have to pray that prayer. Even on a Sunday when I come forward to do a pastoral ministry in the Sunday service, I always say, Holy Spirit, tell me the moment to go forward. Holy Spirit, speak through me now. <laughs> with the words you've given me. I, de I need him. He's my helper. The helper wants to help us by giving us the equipping and the power and the grace to do what he's called us to do or what God wants us to do. He will help you in any situation you are in. Ask him to help. 
And you will have divine, supernatural ability which surpasses those who do not know him. He gives you divine equipping and favour. Praise the Lord. When you're feeling weak, when you're feeling unable, ask Holy Spirit. He's the one that will come and help you in your times of weakness and times of failing and times of struggle. He's also the advocate, it says here. The advocate is someone that defends you, that is there for you. You know, when other people are criticising you and gossiping about you, he's the one that will defend you. And the Bible says, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. God will take that into account. He's the one that will be our defender. He'll sort that out. The Holy Spirit is your advocate, standing with you to defend you and be on your side. He's not against you, but he's for you. He defends us when people attack us. Holy Spirit is there as your advocate and my advocate. Uh, surely all of the things I'm speaking about today, about the Holy Spirit, should make us want to and long to develop a friendship with him and know him better and experience him and talk to him and listen to him. He is the one to do these things in our lives. Why would we neglect it and try and struggle through all on our own, in our own, our own ego and pride that we can cope with every situation? Holy Spirit is also, it says here, the intercessor. That means he prays for us. Praise God. Isn't it wonderful the Holy Spirit prays for us? Amen. I will come further to that in a little while, but he is praying for you. Hallelujah. And then it says he's also the strengthener and the standby. Standby. It means he's always there standing with me. As we read already, that he will be with you forever in, verse, uh, in, in John chapter 14. But he will never leave you. In other words, if he's standing with me, it means late at night when I'm standing at the bus stop and I'm a bit nervous and you might feel a bit danger is there. He is with me. It means when you are in a situation where you feel vulnerable, where you, you feel that maybe you might be in a bit of danger, when you're alone at home at night in the house, when you're concerned about your situation, he is the one to stand by you and be there to defend you and protect you and watch over you. He is there and you will never walk alone. Yeah. He is always with us. When you feel like you're in danger, Holy Spirit is there with you. Talk to him. He might tell you to take a different route home. But he's there to protect you, watch over you, and look after you. Hallelujah. Amen. And then we go to John chapter 16. And it says something else about the Holy Spirit. Where it says, When the Spirit, this is verse 13, John 16 verse 13. When he... The spirit of truth comes. He will guide you into all the truth. Mm. For he won't speak his own message, but he will tell whatever he hears from the Father. Mm. He will give the message that he's been given to him, has been given to him. And, look at, listen to this, this is powerful. And he, the Holy Spirit, will announce and declare to you the things that are to come and are going to happen in the future. Wow. Now this is awesome. He... Holy Spirit is the one that tells us things that are going to happen in the future. Mm. Now, it doesn't mean that I know every single future event. It's not saying that. But there are some events that are to happen in the future that Holy Spirit is able to tell you and prepare you ahead of time of what is going to happen. And he always gets it right. Never fails. When he says something, it always occurs. Amen. And that's how sometimes... We can claim to know future events. That's how also we prophesy and declare things that are going to happen in the future. Things about my life. I'm, God might reveal them to me by the Holy Spirit. Things that are going to happen for me. He might reveal to me things that are going to happen in someone else's life. In which case we may give a prophetic word to someone. Or a prophecy of some other description. But it comes from the Holy Spirit. Because we don't know these things. But Holy Spirit reveals and tells them to us. Maybe he will also give us some kind of indication of a national event that's going to happen. Something for our nation. I've had this experience many times in my life. Where I know something is going to happen ahead of time. And it doesn't mean, like I said, that I know all things that are going to happen ahead of time. But there are things that I have known in advance which I've been able publicly to declare and say because Holy Spirit told me. I've been able to say, 
before I got my job with NatWest Bank. Even before I'd had the interview, I told everyone I'd got the job. Before I'd even had an interview. How did I know that? Holy Spirit put that within me. I knew I was going to pass my driving test before, and I don't even had, and I knew I would pass it first time, even with just a few lessons, because again, Holy Spirit put that there. I knew I was going to uh, leave England to go to Holland. And when I was working in Holland at an organisation called Jong and Frey, the Lord called us to go to Amsterdam to work for another mission organisation called YWAM. The door for YWAM was closed, but God's Holy Spirit said, you're going to Amsterdam. And we told everyone we're going to Amsterdam, but there was no way to go to Amsterdam. Nevertheless, we went there because God said it and I declared it in advance. Again, no, it's not being arrogant. It's not because I know all things, but there are some things that Holy Spirit tells us in advance. I've had many experiences like that. Even some political events God has shown me by the Holy Spirit. So I know these things in advance. He is the one that will tell you of things to come. And when you know the things to come, like he doesn't say to you things like, well, tomorrow it's going to be cloudy because we know it's going to be cloudy already. When he tells you things to come, it is usually for something that ordinarily you could never believe for. When he tells you of things to come, it is going to be for things that maybe actually look like they're not going to happen or really uh, are very unlikely or even impossible to occur. But he puts that faith in your heart by his Holy Spirit to believe for sometimes the impossible, that a way will be made when there seems to be no way. Praise the Lord. And this is also how we can be totally certain sometimes about events that are going to occur, because Holy Spirit has revealed us the things that are to come. The reason sometimes some people can doubt things is because they themselves haven't heard. That's why it's essential for us to hear for ourselves in situations from the Holy Spirit. And not to just go to other people and, and rely upon what someone else says. Go and hear for yourself what Holy Spirit is saying. Now the Spirit of Truth that the world cannot receive reveals to us also the truth about God and who he is and what he's like. You know, many people have a complete misunderstanding of God. They think that anything that happens is God's judgment or punishment upon them. And we had the big thing earlier on in the year when many people were saying, COVID is the judgment of God upon the world. And that's, a, that, that's, a, that's, a, that's an affront to the character of God. God didn't bring COVID to this world. God wasn't bringing COVID to, to judge the world. But when you don't know what Holy Spirit is saying, you can come to these conclusions because of your image of who you believe God is, God is and what he's like. And so this is something that has happened many times. People have their own understanding of God, but the spirit of truth leads us into all truth about who God is and what he's like. Spirit of truth not only shows us what God is like and who he's like, but the spirit of truth also shows us what we are like. You can only really know yourself when Holy Spirit reveals who you are. He shows us who we are. He reveals things within us that may need to change. Things that we may not have even been aware of, of how we have certain habits or, or certain way we live and do things. And also Holy Spirit is the one that reveals to us the truth of how special and precious we are to Jesus Christ. And you are so special. But many people hear that God loves them, but it doesn't penetrate beyond just something that hits their mind. It will penetrate to your heart when the Holy Spirit puts that in there and speaks it himself into your heart of how special and wonderful and precious are the thoughts of God towards you and how fearfully and beautifully and wonderfully made you are and how much he loves you so much. Spirit of truth is also the one who opens our eyes to the scriptures. Many people read the Bible, but if you don't read the Bible with the help of the Holy Spirit, we will come to all sorts of strange doctrines. And that's why there are so many weird doctrines out there in the world. Those doctrines have come by people who've read the Bible and used their logic to understand it, used their mind and their reason to understand it, or in some cases have had demonic lies twisted perverting the scriptures to come to the conclusions they've come to. You can never know, truly, the revelations of scripture without the help of the Holy Spirit. 
To understand the word of God, we need the Holy Spirit. A totally wrong idea about scripture and wrong doctrines come when we just read the Bible and just assume that we will understand it. Every time you pick up the Bible to read, pray a little prayer. I do this every time I read the Bible. I say, Holy Spirit, open my eyes and teach me. I can't just read the Bible and expect that Mike's brain will understand spiritual things. And many people who are very intelligent, professors and highly qualified people, use their brain so much that they come up with all of these crazy doctrines that they then teach in Bible colleges because they came from the brain instead of from the Spirit of God. Mm. And so people who are highly intelligent often think they know more, but in fact they know less because in their own strength, we know nothing. In our own brain, we know nothing. It's only by the revelation. A man can have, have nothing, receive nothing, unless it be given from heaven above. Unless the Spirit of God gives it to us, unless God reveals it to us. So always pray that prayer before you read the Bible. Lord, open my eyes today and teach me from your word. Sadly, I find that there are many Christians who actually are scared and even fearful of the Holy Spirit. But I want to remind you all today, Holy Spirit is the same in character as the Father and the Son. You have nothing to fear with Holy Spirit. He is a pure Holy Spirit and he is a gentleman. Mm. Nothing to fear whatsoever. It's, and so it's absolutely essential that we take time to develop a friendship and communion and intimate relationship with the Spirit of God. He is the one to help us in every situation. He's a gentleman, but he will not force himself upon any of us. If you don't want Holy Spirit, if you have no desire for him, he's not going to force himself upon you. If you have no thirst for the things of God, then he's not going to force it to happen. But if you're thirsty, he will satisfy the thirst. If you want God, he will satisfy the hunger and thirst that you have in your life. If you don't want him, if you're happy just to say, I'm happy to go to church on Sunday, do my little bit, pray my prayer, uh, and, and uh, even attend the home group on a Wednesday, if that's it for you, fine. But if you have more of a hunger for God in your life, if you desire and thirst to hear from him and know him and talk to him and commune with him, then he wants that even more than you do. And he will respond to that desire of your heart when you say, I'm open to you, come Lord, fellowship with me, show me your ways, teach me, open my eyes, I want to know you, I want to talk to you, I want to commune with you, I want fellowship with you, I'm hungry for more of you, Lord. Let's open our lives to the Holy Spirit. Let's allow him to take charge. Let's allow him to influence the decisions we make. Let's allow him to be all, to become all that we are because of his influence upon us. You know, we only came to salvation in the first place. You only got born again in the first place and received Jesus as your Messiah because Holy Spirit opened your eyes. If Holy Spirit did not open our eyes to the truth of Jesus dying on the cross and raising, raising again from the dead, if, Jesus didn't, if Holy Spirit didn't reveal that to us, we would still be stuck today in some false religion. Or we would be religious people may be attending church every week but not having a relationship with God. We would just be religious church goers, believing that there is a God but not knowing him as a friend and not having the intimacy that he craves and desires and which deep down inside we actually want as well. Or maybe if we didn't have the revelation from Holy Spirit of who God is and what Jesus did for us and the Come to, and had come to salvation, maybe we would believe, be believing the lies that we were taught at school, that we evolved and that there was a big bang and we all came from apes. Many people today believe that because they've not had their eyes open to the Holy Spirit. And many of them are quite intelligent people as well. <coughs> 2 Corinthians 13, verse 14, is one of the most famous Bible verses that there is. It's a Bible verse that is repeated in so many church services throughout the whole world every time Christians gather. And often the services conclude with these words, Now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship or the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Have you ever heard that said? Of course we have. We've heard it multitudes of times. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with who? Be 
with you all. It is the will of God that all of us, every single one of us, has that communion and fellowship with the Holy Spirit. This is not something for pastors, for leaders, for super Christians. This is for every believer, communion and fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Sitting down with him, listening to him, talking to him. Talking to him and communion with him as you're on the bus, as you're walking along the street. A constant relationship of being aware of his presence, talking to him, chatting to him, involving him, opening to him, seeking his advice and counsel and knowing him as an advocate and as a standby and as a helper and as a strengthener every step of the day every moment we breathe and live that is the communion and fellowship that he desires it's one of the most famous verses in the bible (laughs) but many christians today want to run to a pastor or to a priest or to a, a, a home group leader, or, a, or a, someone, or a parent maybe, someone else to teach me and show me, what does this mean? They want us sometimes to be the comforter, the helper, the guide, the teacher for them. Now, it's my job, I'm a pastor, I'm happy to try and comfort people, teach people, uh, stand with people, help them. I'm happy to do all of that. But if you take me with all of my best intentions and best efforts, I cannot compare to what Holy Spirit can do for you as comforter, strengthener, and everything else he wants to be. In fact, it was the Old Testament where they had to keep going to the priest, where they had to keep going to someone else to be their strengthener, counsellor, guide, and teacher, and whatever. That's Old Covenant. Here in the New Testament, it says that the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Praise the Lord. God's will is for every single one of us to experience the new covenant, which is the communion and fellowship with God, Christ in us, the Holy Spirit in us, the hope of glory. The Holy Spirit in us, that lives in us and is there and abides with us. Praise God. This is something he desires so much, but so often it's neglected. He's forgotten. He's overlooked. He's not even consulted. We just make our own decisions and drift through life as though he's not even there half the time. Now in addition to all that I've mentioned, as I said earlier, the Holy Spirit helps us to pray. Romans 8.26 says this, Likewise, the Spirit also helps us in our weaknesses, for we don't know what we should pray, as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. When you start praying with the Holy Spirit, praying in tongues, when you start praying like that, Holy Spirit is praying for you. And when you start praying like that, and we don't know how to pray or how to, or what prayer to offer up or what to say exactly, it is at times like that that visions come, that we see a picture, that we, see an insp- that we get an inspired Bible verse from the Holy Spirit to guide us and lead us further in our praying on the issues that we're praying about. You know, prayer, where you just have a list of praying item after item, it's, it's effective, but it can become boring. Many people don't like to pray when it's just praying one thing after another after another. But when you pray with Holy Spirit, and he answers on the things you've been praying about and gives you more information of how to pray, more guidance how to pray, when he instructs you more clearly with a vision or with a Bible verse, when Holy Spirit does that for you, prayer is no longer something boring, but it becomes something exciting. It becomes thrilling because you know you're making progress. And that's why so often you will see in, in our prayer teams, I, I, I just praise God for the people in Holy Nation that join the prayer teams. We see victory after victory after victory. Why? Because we're praying with the Holy Spirit who's guiding us and leading us. Some of the battles have lasted a long time, but we still see victory after victory in the prayers that we pray because of Holy Spirit's guiding and leading to us. Praise God for Holy Spirit. We need Holy Spirit to give us those visions and guidance to know what to pray. I was, um, I was preparing this and I came across an old testimony which uh, was quite powerful. So I thought I would share it because it fitted in really well with this. I, and uh, it reminded me of a time, it was many years ago, I was in Holland with Jackie and we went to bed. We both got into bed and as soon as we got into bed, Jackie said, I've got to pray for my dad. And she got, immediately got out of bed and started praying for her dad. She prayed for him for a while. 
And during the praying for her dad, because she didn't know what to pray for her dad, we were in Holland and her dad was in England, while we were praying, uh, she saw a vision. And in her vision, she saw her dad go down on his knees and ask Jesus Christ to come into his heart. And she saw him give his life to Jesus. After that, the need for prayer, we felt, was over and we went to bed. Fine. Maybe about two weeks later, I think it was, we got a message from Jackie's mother saying, I don't know what's happened to your dad. He's gone a bit crazy. He's started going to church and he's even listening now to Christian cassette tapes and messages. I don't know what's happened to him. Um, you see, the Bible says, on, in heaven, uh, on earth, as it is in heaven. It starts in heaven. God does it first in heaven, in the spirit. In the spirit realm, we'd already seen that Jackie's dad was going to get saved. We didn't know the date. We didn't know how long it would take. But we knew that it was done. Sometimes we don't know the timing of the things, the future things to come. But you know it's done. And this was done in heaven. And later it was done on earth. It actually took six months for the full fulfillment of him to actually uh, go onto his knees and give his life to Jesus Christ. But we saw within two weeks the initial beginnings of that, of him go, start wanting to go to church and listening to Christian messages. Praise the Lord. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 15, says this. Paul said these words. What's the conclusion then? I will pray with my spirit and I will also pray with my understanding. It is essential that in prayer meetings we pray in tongues, as well as praying with our understanding. You don't only pray in tongues, and you don't only pray with your English understanding language. You pray and mix both in a prayer meeting. And you'll find later on in the same chapter, a few verses later, Paul said these words. He said that he thanks God that he prays in tongues or speaks in tongues more than all of you or any of you. Paul spoke in tongues more than anyone else. Why was Paul continually speaking in tongues then? Well, the Bible says that when we speak in tongues, we build ourselves up in our holy faith. You are building yourself up. Holy Spirit is strengthening you, and you're building yourself up by the speaking in tongues. That's another reason we need Holy Spirit. You build yourself up in your faith. But Paul also said, which you will know, he said, pray without ceasing. So when Paul is praying in speaking in tongues more than anyone else, or all of them put together. The reason he's doing that is because he's praying without ceasing. He's in constant communion, relationship and talking to the Holy Spirit. In his prayer language and with his understanding. So praying in tongues is essential for us. It builds us up and it enables us to continue that communion with Holy Spirit. Like I said, it's okay if you want to run to the pastor. But it's so much better if you can just go to Holy Spirit instead. I mentioned from the uh, uh, Gospel of John how he is an intercessor and he prays for us. Well, as we pray in tongues, that's when Holy Spirit prays for us. And Romans 8 says he prays us for us when we don't know how to pray. He's our intercessor. Now, one thing I've also found over the years is that many Christians feel that they are unworthy to receive Holy Spirit. Unworthy to approach him and talk to him. Unworthy to just sit down and be honest with him. Unworthy just to open up their hearts to him. And so they kind of ignore him and think, he, he won't listen to me, or I'm not worthy, I've, I've, didn't, I've had a bad day, or I did something wrong today. But I want to show you that it's not that. Acts 2, verse 39 says this. For the promise of the Holy Spirit, that is, is to you and to your children and to all who are far off, as many as the Lord our God will call. So the Holy Spirit is to all who believe. Every single believer in the Lord Jesus Christ has opportunity to receive and know Holy Spirit. <coughs> it's to all even who are far off. Maybe today you think to yourself, I'm far away from God. I'm far away from Holy Spirit. I've lost my desire. I've lost my passion. I feel far away from God. But even to you who are far away, you can draw near to Holy Spirit today. And believe me, he will draw near to you. Far more delightfully even than you draw near to him. There was the example in the scriptures of the lady who was the uh, Samaritan woman at the well. Now this Samaritan woman, 
She went out at midday in the noon sun to collect water. In that culture, women always went early morning in groups to collect the water. It was safer to do it that way, but it was in the cooler part of the day. The only reason that someone would go at midday on their own to collect water was because they were either A, an immoral person, a prostitute, or B, they are an outcast, or possibly both. So this lady was either immoral, or an outcast, or she was both. She also couldn't have been very wealthy because if she had any money, she would have sent the maid to collect the water. So she had to even go and collect her own water. She was alone, an outcast. An unclean Samaritan lady, but Jesus wanted to give her the Holy Spirit. Isn't that amazing? An inferior person, because she wasn't a Jew, she was a Samaritan. And yet, Jesus wanted her to have the Holy Spirit. A poor lady, without resources, without much money. But Jesus wanted her to know the Holy Spirit. She was a lady of broken relationships. Maybe she knew what it was like to be hurt. She had five husbands. I don't know what happened to them all. Maybe one or two might have died, but that was hurtful for her. Maybe one or two had left her and gone with someone else. That would have hurt her. She knew what broken relationships were like. And Jesus wanted her to have a Holy Spirit to be with her. Jesus wanted to give her the Holy Spirit. And today, if you think that you are unworthy, it doesn't matter if you're broken or wounded or hurting. He wants you to have the Holy Spirit. If you feel far away from God, God, where are you? He wants you to have Holy Spirit. Maybe you feel inferior to others or rejected. Maybe you've committed some sin. Maybe you feel like you're an outcast or that you're not appreciated by others. You are appreciated by Jesus and he wants you to have Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is waiting for you. He's waiting to be your everything, your comforter, your friend, your standby, your counsellor, your advocate. Just one thing would be required though of you. The same thing that Jesus said to the lady. He said, and she replied, give me that water. I thirst. Do you thirst today? Do you have a thirst today for Holy Spirit? Do you have a thirst for the things of God? <coughs> I started this message in Acts chapter 1. Verse 1, where it says, The former account I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach. The former account. The former account was the Gospel of Luke, and now Luke is writing his second book about the works of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit wants to be able to do these type of works with you and me today. You know, if you read the book of Acts in the Bible, it is impossible not to notice that everything in the book of Acts was supernatural. Every day they were seeing signs and wonders and miracles. It was a daily occurrence because of the closeness and working with <coughs> and walking with Holy Spirit. Life was exciting with Holy Spirit. Life becomes religious and boring and tedious and a routine when we just repeat the same things without involving Holy Spirit in our lives. If we read the scriptures it is obvious that Holy Spirit was so prevalent in everything that the old, that the uh, New Testament early church did. They worked with the Holy Spirit for exciting things. They saw healings which were totally normal. Answers to prayer were, were normal. Gifts of the Holy Spirit, prophecies, tongues, interpretations, words of knowledge, words of wisdom. All the gifts of the Holy Spirit were operating totally normally. It wasn't an unusual phenomena. It was a daily occurrence. They saw dreams. They had visions. Angels would appear to them. People were getting saved on a regular, continual basis. They had divine appointments to go to certain locations, to be led by the Spirit, to meet a, pers a certain person at a certain time. Very clear express expressions of guidance came from the Holy Spirit. Why? Because they lived with Him, they talked to Him, they involved Him, they, they prayed in tongues continually. This was their life. And this same life is available to us. Not only available, it is for all. 
as we've read already. Basically, it is the presence of the Holy Spirit which turns ordinary situations into supernatural, extraordinary situations. It is the presence of the Holy Spirit which does the marvellous signs and wonders. And it's the presence of the Holy Spirit which caused the disciples to be able to say, it seemed good to us and to the Holy <coughs> Spirit. The Holy Spirit said this, you've not just lied to men, you've lied to God. They knew things that were to come by the Holy Spirit. And these things are available to us today. You can know the things that are to come by Holy Spirit speaking to you. And if we don't have the life of the, that life with the Holy Spirit in our lives, then we don't really have anything to offer this world, except more religion, more information and more knowledge. But the world doesn't need that. It needs the life of Spirit of God. Amen. We have been entrusted to receive in these human vessels the fullness of the Spirit of God. And therefore, by fellowshipping, fellowshipping with Him, we are able to have boldness, we gain confidence, we have authority and we have faith to know what we're talking about and what we're saying because we've heard from Spirit of God and we've been fellowshipping with Him. Today, I want to ask you, as I finish with these verses, Acts 2, 17 and 18, are you ready to pray for Holy Spirit? It says in Acts 2, 17 and 18, that I've written it here somewhere. Praise the Lord. It shall come to pass in the last days that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. All. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Upon my men servants and my maid servants, as male and female alike, I'll pour out my spirit in those days and they shall prophesy. <clears throat> this is supposed to be normal, common, everyday occurrence for those who have the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, remain in Jerusalem. For 40 days he was among them, but the day of Pentecost, we know, comes 50 days after the Resurrection Sunday. Therefore, after the 40 days of Jesus being amongst them and then ascending back to the Father, there were 10 days before the day of Pentecost occurred. They were praying for 10 days and calling out for Holy Spirit. And when he came, they were never the same again. These disciples already believed in God. They already believed that Jesus was Messiah. They already knew that he died and rose again. But there was more that they needed. If those disciples had died before the day of Pentecost, they would have gone to heaven because they believed in Jesus as their Lord and Saviour. They were born again. But they didn't have Holy Spirit. Don't let people tell you, if you're born again, that's enough. You've got Holy Spirit, that's enough. There is something more for you. The comforter, the standby, and the baptism of the Spirit of God to fill you and to make you somebody that can be filled with the excitement and joy of continuing the work that Luke wrote about. Jesus began it and now he is the work of the Holy Spirit and we are a continuation of that. Today I want to ask you, will you pray with me? Will you pray and ask Holy Spirit to come into your life in a new fresh way? Will you open up your heart for that? Will you call out to him to fill you anew? Just wherever you are now, just go onto your knees and lift your hands and I'm going to include you in my prayer. I'm going to hand over to Pastor Vicky. He's going to conclude the service as a convener in a moment. But I just want you to get in position now and start praying and I'm going to ask Pastor Vicky to continue this prayer as he comes forward. Father God, we may have been far away from you. For whatever reason, we've neglected Holy Spirit. Forgive us for our neglect of the most precious person and the most precious thing you've given us since our salvation when you gave us Holy Spirit. We are not content to just try and live this life by our own efforts and to try and make life exciting by our own entertainment mechanisms, but we want and need Holy Spirit. We want the life that Holy Spirit brings. Father God, I'm asking for everyone now that's praying, that's on their knees with their hands raised, all the people even here now with their hands raised who are on their knees. I pray for them, Lord God, that you will give them a fresh hunger to draw near to Holy Spirit, to include Holy Spirit in every decision, to hear his voice, to know his comfort, to know his guidance, to hear what he wants to say to me today. 
to open scriptures to me, to transform my life and to change me. Holy Spirit, I pray that wherever the people are now, even those who are not baptized in your spirit, I pray that you will cause them to be able to speak in tongues. And if you've not spoken in tongues for a while, just start doing it now. Mm. Start releasing something new. Start building something new. And begin to let the Holy Spirit pray in you and through you and for you. And as you do that, maybe you're going to see a vision or maybe you're going to get a Bible mm. verse. And this will be something for you now to regenerate and rejuvenate your life and reinvigorate you and to live that Christian life again with a passion and a vibrancy instead of just going through the motions and just getting through life. He wants us to be with Holy Spirit in the victory Amen. that Holy Spirit wants to lead us. Amen. Praise yes. God. Yes. Pastor Vicky. Hallelujah. Your presence, whoever is praying right now, just continue to pray. Continue to pray. Hallelujah. Continue to pray. Holy Spirit, we just welcome you in our homes, in our places, O oh Lord God, in our living rooms, O oh Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, come and have your way. Touch every heart that is praying right now. Oh yes, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, go forth. Go forth, Holy Spirit. Go forth. Minister to every heart. Minister, touch every heart that is craving for you right now. Touch every heart, touch every soul that is desirous of you, Holy Spirit, right now. Only you can bring transformation. Only you can bring change. Only you can give us the power. Just as Acts chapter 1 verse 8 says that you shall receive power when the Spirit of God will come upon you. Holy Spirit, you can give us the power to overcome sin. You can give us the power to overcome our weaknesses, our temptation. And I just want to draw our attention to a measuring road. A lot of us may be feeling like that, you know what? I have been baptized in the Holy Spirit. I can speak in tongues. I see visions. I see dreams. The Spirit of God speaks to me. Let me say something. The gifts of the Spirit can be a sign that the Spirit of God is upon us. But the measuring road, when we know that we are truly filled with the Holy Spirit, the measuring road, how do we now, how can I now that I'm truly filled and fully filled? With the Holy Spirit. And that matching role is found in Galatians chapter 5. Verses 22 to 23. Let me read it to us. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love. Joy. Peace. Patience. Kindness. Goodness. Faithfulness. Gentleness. And self control. These are the signs that determine and tell us where we are in our measure of the Holy Spirit. The gifts that are given to us, they cannot be taken back. God gives and they're irrevocable. They've been given to us. But yes, it is true that somebody could be operating in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, yet they may not be completely and properly filled with the Holy Spirit. This is the measuring road. If today in your life you're lacking love, you're lacking gentleness, you're lacking self-control, you're lacking patience, you're lacking kindness and goodness of God in your life, you just find hard to love people, to be good to people, to be kind to people, to be gentle to people, then my friends, the only solution we have is Holy Spirit. Only when we know that the fruits of the Holy Spirit are pouring out from our lives and from our hearts, then we know that we are being truly filled and being raised and being guided and being led by the Holy Spirit. Just as a tree, when it bears the fruits, we know that that tree is an apple tree because it's bearing apple. So when we are bearing these good fruits of the Holy Spirit in our life, we know that we are truly filled. We know that we are truly filled. So this morning, this is not an ordinary message. Maybe you've heard it before. This is an important message. The season, the time that we are going through today in this age, we need Holy Spirit. We need Him more than ever before because He is the one who will bring wisdom, who will bring power to overcome the schemes of the enemy. It's time that we raise up our levels. Once filled is not always filled. Once filled need to continually be filled with the Holy Spirit. Bible says, Bible tells us, be continually, be continually filled with the Holy Spirit. So let us continue to desire more of the Spirit of God. And if we are being led, if you read Galatians chapter 5, 
it will it will show us it will expose to us that if we are being led by our sinful desires we are lacking the guidance of the holy spirit in our life he wants to fellowship with you he wants to be part of your life he wants to be that parakletos who comes alongside each and every one of us but he will not force his way in we need to invite him we need to let him in and we need to receive him wholeheartedly father i thank you for this word that you have ministered to each and every one of us lord god i pray that your children who have been watching this stream today oh lord god to your church all our friends abroad oh lord jesus we pray that lord they will desire the spirit of god even those who have just prayed today with pastor mike who have been praying even now lord i pray holy spirit go forth i urge you i request of you holy spirit go and touch those hearts touch those minds touch them and fill them afresh fill them afresh so they may walk in the power of the holy spirit so they may walk with the fruitfulness of the holy spirit in their lives let the fruits of the spirit be evident in their lives so lord god be seen and be experienced by others oh lord jesus lord i pray holy spirit that you will minister to each and every one of us take us to the dimension of the spirit realm the only way we can operate in the spirit realm is through you holy spirit i pray those who desire to soar higher and higher they will start to invite more of you into their lives oh lord god those who desire to go further in their prophetic lifestyle i pray holy spirit that you minister to those hearts right now those who desire to be led of you those who desire to pray by the leading of the holy spirit holy spirit i pray that you will minister to them right now those who need the fruits of the holy spirit i pray holy spirit you minister to them right now those who need the power of the spirit holy spirit i pray you minister to them right now those who need breakthroughs in their lives holy spirit i pray that you bring breakthroughs in their lives oh lord god financial breakthroughs relational breakthroughs oh lord god whatever those breakthroughs they are waiting for holy spirit i pray that you bring those breakthroughs in each and every one's life oh lord come holy spirit we need you more than ever before come and have your way in every family in every home in every heart come and have your way minister to us guide us and lead us we ask all of this in the mighty name of jesus and everyone joining me online said amen amen, amen. just want to say that next sunday we will be back in the church building not online yes the service may be broadcasted as well at the same time for those who can't get to church but those who can come let us let us rejoice let us run to the house of the lord next sunday 10:30 a.m. so not 11 a.m. 10:30 a.m. so come be there let us worship let us fellowship and uh, yeah invite friends and families and whatever whoever you want to invite they can also watch online as well so really god bless all of you for joining us this morning thank you pastor mike for your excellent empowering message once again to all of us and uh, we wish you all a, a great week go in the power of the holy spirit live in the power of the holy spirit be led of the holy spirit let this week be a week filled with the holy spirit and not just this week but for the rest of our lives now may the grace of our lord jesus christ and the love of god and what we heard today the fellowship of the holy spirit be with all the saints now and forevermore god bless you amen holy nation church find love find freedom find purpose